All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the quarterfinals of Grand Prix Vancouver here in British Columbia. It's Canada, and we are ready to rock and roll with A.O. Paquette of Canada against Jeremy Dazani of France, the former player of the year who is now back on the Pro Tour train, Randy, by becoming silver as a result of his oh, last wow. two rounds. Uh, he has made it back in. We begin with a Stone Forge Acolyte uh, yes. straight out of the gates for A.O. Paquette. Yeah, I know Canada. there was some speculation during the draft. A.O. Paquette is running both his Stone Forge Acolytes. He's running both his kitn uh, Chitinous Cloak, Kitness Cloaks? Chitinous. Chitinous Cloaks. Let's go with that. And his Bone Saw. So there's three equipment in his deck. There's also two Stone Forge Acolytes. I mean, I think the Acolyte also, like, it, it's a one drop that you can curve out with with support creatures. Maybe that's part of the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, does not sound like Ao was in love with his deck. He says, the deck is not good. I had a bad draft. He got some nice cards, Woodland Wanderer, Oblivion Strike, Sheer Drop, but, you know, deck's pulling in a couple of different directions. He did wind up playing it three color, so it's base green white with a black splash is where he landed. The black splash for Oblivion Strike. Vampire Envoy, Eilie, and Bailoff Null. So pretty su significant uh, splash then. Four yeah, cards. Yeah, two swamps, and uh, he can get them with... Uh, he's got a Pilgrim's Eye and a Lone Larva to okay. kind of go find them when he really needs them. So Jeremy uh, has turned his McKindy Aeronaut sideways. It's 1-3. It flies, and it is an ally, uh, which is important. Yeah, we were speculating at various points during the draft as to whether Jeremy was going to be three-color. Right. He landed on two, so he is just red-white. Uh, he said, you know, uh, Melissa DeTore was talking to him af after he built, and he took those two early va vampire envoys. He, s he described black as hard to give up, but white was super open. His verdict on his deck, it's not great, but it's more than okay. So Jeremy thinks his deck is decent. Ao thinks his deck is bad. I know that uh, the chat, as they were watching, I was kind of reading along a little mm -hmm. bit, seemed to have the opposite conclusion. They seemed to like where Ao wound up a little better than Jeremy. Okay, well, uh, we'll see what happens here. Allied reinforcements, a pair of tutus. Missing land drops from AO is not going to give us a clean read on uh, who actually has the better deck here. Nobody can compete well on two lands and a stone for Jackalite. Yeah, he's actually in discard mode already. Jump oh, the lone larva, mm. they can go get find the land too. Ironic. Jeremy Dizani, the eight seed here. Ao Paquette, the three seed. Uh, not super significant, other than. Very particularly, you choose whether to play or, or draw if you are the higher seed. Yeah, and it's not a straightforward bracket. I know that's sometimes confusing to people. In constructed Grand Prix, it's just the normal bracket math you're used to. One plays eight, two plays seven, right. etc. cetera. Uh, in limited, they want to randomize the order in which people sit around the table. So it's completely random who sits where, and then you play across like normally for a four draft. Four rounds, yes. And the only thing the seeds do is tell this. you play draw. Five, for five mana, that's pretty efficient. Indeed. As we see a second allied reinforcements, two more two twos, and an expedition envoy. That's six power spread across three creatures. Five mana, one turn. Well done, Jeremy. And Ao putting on a clinic and why one two creatures are not actually worth a card. All, all that one two was good for was <laughs> scooping up his other cards. Oh my word! So that one is over. And it seems likely that something else may potentially be over. Let's have a word with Brian David Marshall. BDM, what do you got? Congratulations to Grand Prix Mexico City champion. Yes. Fabrizio and Terry. Wow. Fabrizio does it again without Hangerback Walker. Whenever, <laughs> whenever he has Hangerback Walker, he 9 0s day one and goes on to a great run. Multiple Grand Prix titles for Fabrizio and Terry. Great job. Three, three, three games set against Tomahara Saito in the finals. Uh, we'll oh. get a little more details about how things played out mm -hmm. in the bracket uh, as we move towards through the top eight. Yeah, we certainly want to find out what, what deck actually won, what Fabrizio's yeah. deck list was. So yeah. we'll get on to that. Uh, fantastic stuff, and that sounds like an amazing final. Thanks very much to BDM. BDM here in Vancouver is going to be watching our off-camera matches, giving us a good sense of what's going on elsewhere. We're already into our second of four quarterfinals. This is Gabe Carlton Barnes against Eric Severson. Oh, it's another ally deck. Okay, so we've got Core Scythe Master uh, and already four counters uh, awoken from Ondu Rising. Yeah, GCB has the black-white version that everyone wants to get. And uh, for Severson, well, he's got a Brood Hunter Worm in the graveyard. That's not normally the zone that's in. That's normally in the sideboard. Well, I think Sheer Drop had some. Or Ondu Rising? Ondu Rising. R right, but just, just it's surprised to see Brood Hunter Worm in a deck. Look, 
the, the red green beat down deck just it's it's a curve out deck. Okay, it wants a certain number of fours. Fair enough. Like, I'm not willing to say Brood Hunter Worm is good. Oh, that's a relief. I will say it's better. Fine. Okay, it's better in curve out world. Yeah, green red with just a touch of blue for Eric. Yeah, this is kind of the landfall deck a little bit. Reckless Aren't bushwhacker. Scripted? And uh, in we come. Because whether you pay it surge or not, it does have haste. And yes, you can go you can see the, the curve of Snapping Larlid two, Netcast the Spider three, that Brood Hunter Worm four to Jury Path Warden five. Now his hasty reckless bushwhacker. Okay, was going to put uh, the Scythe Master in the way and trade off for the Snapping Gnarled. But Severson's board is very good right now. Gabe gets to untap with that 4-4. But he is at 4 life. Eric Severson already has earned himself a spot at next week's Pro Tour. He'll be on the Team East-West Bowl. Kind of the target guys and the Cali guys teaming up. Red, green, the oh, the blue is for exert influence. It says green was definitely <laughs> open, but the cards weren't good enough for the payoff. Maybe I shouldn't have been in red. The key pick of his draft was pick four when he took Seed Guardian over Isolation Zone. All right. GCB says blue was open, but he couldn't figure out how to get in. He wished he drafted a waste because he saw an ev Evolving Wilds last pack. Spatial Contortion, but with only three ways to cast it. White black allies, quote, it can win. Ah, he's where the General Tarzi landed. Uh, tra uh, uh, Tazri, yeah. Tazri. That's why he went white. He got it third pick. But the best thing to search for is Malakir Soothsayer. I mean, that, that, let's not pretend that's a terrible thing. That's yeah, a, here's fine. a 4 4 that uh, draws you cards repeatedly for the low, low bargain price of one life. So Severson very much ahead here now and is smashing in with Path Warden and Netcaster Spider and Reckless Bushwhacker. 4-4 four, four looking to trade on the 5-4. 2-3 Netcaster gets through. 2-1 uh, destroys 0-1. Uh, I think we're well in hand for Severson here by the looks of things. Um, but we, and uh, <laughs> now more so than ever, um, because there's Grove Rumbler. Gabe but will yeah. sacrifice his Evolving Wilds for a Plains. Uh, let's just stay here one more turn, because this should be the last turn of the game. Uh, our first match is underway in game two. We'll be there in just a moment, um, once we see whether Gabe has a planar outburst, shall we say, um, from the top <laughs> of the deck. Um, so uh, let's take a look at that. Um, and GCB says no. So let's go back to our main match, which is underway uh, in the quarterfinals. Severson leads Gabe Colton Barnes uh, by one to zero. Uh, and we are back underway in Jeremy Dizani against Ao Paquette. Jeremy's uh, ally deck, of course, with Feldar Cove curving into Kozilek <laughs> Sentinel. Fabulous. Against Pilgrim's Eye. So Ao Paquette is at least in business um, with the. Um, Multiple colors. Yeah, sort of Dizani drawing from the, the bottom half dozen cards mm -hmm. in his deck. Uh, for sure. Ao sitting there with Oath of Gideon, sitting there with Oblivion Strike, sitting there with Jiraga Auxiliary. And that's what's up next. One day, uh, that will grow up to be a support network uh, with yep. six uh, mana as the activation to support two. Feels like if Ao can't beat this start though, then you got to give the the draft medal to Jeremy. Yeah, Raph uh, Raph Levy was was coming in to support Jeremy, teammate on uh, Team Revolution for the Pro Tour next week, mm -hmm. uh, and he said, you know, when Jeremy got to the last two rounds here, if he won his penultimate round, uh, that would guarantee him the silver invite for Madrid. Okay. Uh, because he's obviously playing next week in Atlanta, but then yep. that would be it. Um, so we get a silver invite from Madrid. Yeah, he's if only he silver again, coming into this right, year, huh? If he, if he wins again, um, which he did, um, to get into the top eight, that guaranteed the now. points that mean he would now uh, well, chain up. He, he's now in business for the season. 
Sure. Um, so, so we'll see him in Atlanta. We'll see him in Madrid. We'll see him in Sydney to close out the year. So already a huge, huge day at the office for Jeremy Dazzani. Player of the year down to silver. It was just a bad year for him last year. It really was. What's your theory? What happened to him last year? Why did the wheels come off? Uh, he just started looking elsewhere. He was playing other things. Okay. Uh, sitting in front of a computer, this but magic not with Magic easy. Online. I, I don't. I don't think there was. I don't think it was particularly oh, hubristic. Short strike. Yep. That's a big game. Yeah, Felidar Felidar Cub going to beat up Jiraga Auxiliary. Eighth power, Felidar Cub. So he just kind of took his, ball, his eye off the ball a little bit. Yeah, and consciously, uh, you know, to an, to an extent, uh, he wanted to see uh, whether he had wh what it took uh, in an online game. Okay. Um, uh, you know, he's... Uh and I think what he found there, I had a conversation with him. He said, well, the thing is, I got to the top 2%, mm -hmm. which is great. But it's, it's meaningless. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and so so he's back. Uh, and the thing is, you know, other other players before him as players of the year have, have struggled immediately after. Brad it's Nelson's true. obviously a very notable, uh, someone who, who found it very tough uh, after that stellar year. Um, and part of that is variance. And, and part of that is, you know, just it is super, super hard. So Otha Gideon comes out with two allies for Paquette to join his Pilgrim's Eye. You could argue that right now Felidar Cub's the most powerful card on the <laughs> battlefield. Didn't expect to say that in the top eight this weekend. Although I did think Felidar Cub had gone up in value significantly. Look, um, he can blow up an Oath of Gideon right now. Right for it once. Right now. So there you see Jeremy, the uh, player of the year. Couple of seasons back, went head to head with Reed Duke essentially in the uh, final Pro Tour of the year. One of them was almost certain to get there, barring all kinds of miracles, um, and it was Dizani uh, who took it in the end, pretty dominatingly in the final Pro Tour of the year. Um, Paquette staying hydrated uh, will just uh, pop home to his own bed. That is something he likes <laughs> a lot. There you see uh, French Hall of Famer Raf Levy uh, in the background, and uh, we had a great look um, at the precise wording on something. Jeremy lays land number five. And here comes the Raptor, the 2-2 two, two for five. It's going to support two, so Felidar Cub gets bigger, Kozilek Sentinel gets bigger, and that means they can smash because there's just two one ones on Paquette's side of the board. Elsewhere, Alan Sun is facing Adam Jansen. Nick Slind is up against Chris Hewitt. And Eric Severson, Gabe Carlton Barnes. They're the other three quarterfinals here at Grand Prix Vancouver. A.O. Paquette is exactly 30 years old. I was speculating. He was definitely a teenager when he was making those Pro Tour top eights, what, 12 years ago? Mm -hmm. A personal trainer. Oh, wow. Uh, I could use one of those. Jeremy, 25. Professional Magic player. He has nine Grand Prix top eights. Yes, he does. That's a he lot of Grand Prix top eights. That's right. 10 now, right? And That's nine coming yes, in. And it's not from an awful lot of starts. Right. Like his, he, he has one of the best win percentages at GPs of anyone in the world. Um, and you know, we're, we're lucky enough on the European circuit, we, we see a lot of him. And he, he is just better uh, than the overwhelming majority of the people he plays against. That doesn't mean he beats them all, but he is great. He's a tremendous player, um, and it's, it's good to see him back um, at or near um, the kind of level that we've seen from him in the past. Nick Slind and Chris Hewitt in the background there. We'll get them under the lights if we can, if we get a space for them. One of them we'll see for sure. 
in the semis. Interesting. Paquette, 18, 12 down, is sending all three creatures in. Jeremy doesn't even think about blocking. No. Oblivion strike the fellow dog cub. Kill the oath. What does this do? Let me, is it let me good for me to kill it? Do, do I want to do this? <laughs> well, I mean, part of the answer is if could you know replayed. it. Right. If it can't do anything, uh, then potentially it could come back at some point. Right. He doesn't know that but AO has no planeswalkers, though. Right. Yeah, so you kill it. but No, he does know that because they saw the picks. Did they? Yes. Yeah, everyone here uh, was shown, because, uh, because let's face it, Jeremy Dizani and Ao Paquette were both doing us a favor and everyone at home sure. by saying, of course, you can see me pick every card. Um, and yeah, the judges basically have to decide, are they going to sequester the players so that it's impossible for them to get information from the stream? Right. Or are they just going to show deck lists? Yeah. Uh, and so what, what they've done is a halfway house. They don't show the deck lists, so you don't know the 20, 22 or 23 oh, sure. cards. But you know the pool. But they show you the pool. Um, so at that point, we do know. Jeremy is aware that Aya Paquette does not have a Planeswalker. But I guess he also knows there's no way to regrowth and replay the Oath. Uh, yes. So uh, just check what it does, and then, yeah, let's put it in the bin. Spark oh. Mage's Gambit. Oh, Spark Mage's Gambit. Okay, that's the first time I've seen that be good on camera this weekend. Kindness Cloak, ha. Equip. Let me have a little uh, look at that. Big. The first game is now done in the quarterfinal between top seed Alan Sun and Adam Jansen. And it is Alan Sun, the top seed, who leads by one to zero in that one. We'll see if we get a chance to uh, take a look at that, um, if they're still going later on. But right now we're focusing on the former player of the year, Jeremy Dizani, in his 10th Grand Prix top eight up against someone in his first, A.O. Paquette, but with a ton of experience, including two Pro Tour top eights, both in 2004, Amsterdam, and then the World Championship, where he finished second to an even younger teenager, the Netherlands, Julian Naughton, who at the time was only 14. I think he was 15. 15, 14, 15. 15. Astral Slide, I, uh, I have a feeling, wasn't, Sounds right. uh, wasn't that in the top eight there? Those decks were good. Speaking of good decks, modern next week. Can't wait for the Pro Tour. Yeah, that's going to be fun. This time, Expedition Envoy didn't come at the end of a five mana turn that also spat out two other allies. This time, it's just, I've got six mana. I'm going to spend one of it on a 2 1 with no ability. And two, that goes like Sentinel's actually earning a spot in the deck this game. It really is. It's 2 5, and it's holding things off. This is double cloak. When it get hot <laughs> under there. <laughs> plus two, plus two. Menace. Yeah, the menace part. Menace, menace. <laughs> really menace. What does double menace do exactly? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and not just because two of isolation. Two pieces of equipment so. and... Only a single token creature, which is now gone forever. Dink. Oh, second land off the top for Ao Paquette. This deck has <laughs> not worked out. And he is at six, which means he's at two yep. or maybe one. He's at two. Well, Ao Paquette, we will see him in Madrid. I think the run may be over for the hometown hero. But he's back on the Pro Tour now. First time in quite some time. Spawn by the mage. Make it sure. Obviously, he doesn't want to spend the mana because some kind of bluff, but. Right, right. He has to bluff something because the, the in we come. is, in fact, lethal. And that's game, set, and match. And Jeremy Dizani, the player of the year with a deck we didn't think was very good, and we're not wrong, <laughs> has advanced to the semi finals of Grand Prix Vancouver by 2 0 over Ao Paquette. Yeah, shrug and a smile from Ao. 
seemed like pretty much exactly the right sentiment there. All right. And, you know, Jeremy's deck may not be great, but I think I do think it came together a little better than AO's. I mean, AO's draws were miserable, but it, his deck did look a little clunky. I mean, three three pieces of kind of mediocre equipment, a couple of one-twos to go get them. Didn't really come together well enough. No, and, and there were signs in Jeremy's deck that turn of the Expedition Envoy, uh, Allied Reinforcements and Expedition mm -hmm. Envoy. That's a legitimate turn. That's, that's fine. That is actually going to put some pressure on things. Um, yeah, and his quote-unquote bad cards are like, oh, here's a, you know, two-mana, one-four that doesn't have any particular synergy, but he's still five points worth of stats for two. Yeah. Picks up a plus one, plus one counter just fine. So right now we're heading up for this uh, quarterfinal, which ah, is Eric three. Stevenson against uh, Gabe Carlton Barnes. And we will see who can get the job done, who will advance. Uh, the winner here will face Jeremy Dizani in the semifinals. Gabe looking at a hand and they're, they're both so still <laughs> trying to work out whether they want to keep. Here we go. Eric Severson begins with a mountain. Gabe Carlton Barnes, his first play, it's a Plains. There we go. Severson, 23 years old. Two mountains becomes Eldrazi uh, Mimic. A mathematician in training. Okay. Learning I to count. I assume that means probably grad student. It's from Berkeley. Right. Oh, okay. Hedron Crawler for Gabe Carlton Barnes. <laughs> Previous magic accomplishment. First place, Pro Tour Battle for Zendikar, day one. Nice. Scion Summoner. And uh, Severson coming out nice and presentably so far. Mimic into Summoner. Carlton Barnes has acceleration in the form of the 0-1 Hedron Crawler. Got a Gideon's uh, reproach there. Also got that General Tazri that was so instrumental in the, the draft of future and past of uh, Jeremy <laughs> Dizani, um, who took press into service over the General. Uh, Gabe got uh, General Tazri pick three, and that's what moved him into white. You get a good look there. There's an un unnatural endurance in Gabe Carlton Barnes' hand as well, which he could fire off here if he wanted. Does he want to take something out with an unnatural endurance? I, I mean, yes. The only question is whether Severson has an answer. Right? He exposes himself to a two-for-one if Severson has the ability to kill his creature's response. But I don't think he just wants to take damage, though. So there's the block. <laughs> and he reaches for the creature as if to pick it up and put it in the graveyard. So no tells. I'm not sure. Gets away with it. Yeah, he's yeah. able to trade the, the one mana trick. For the two-two creature. And now here's a rumble, rumble, rumble. Three-three trample. GCB, thirty-six years old. He is a software developer mm -hmm. when he's not playing Magic. In Portland. Yeah. Draft PDX, the team that he. Uh, kind of at least spiritually leads. Oh, yeah. I think they're pretty democratic, but uh, he, he's very much the, the prime mover in that. Sounds right. 12 Pro Tour Day 2s. We'd heard the 12 PTQ wins, just the way I heard the story. But yeah, 12 Day 2s is it's a lot of Pro Tour magic. Mm -hmm. His other previous magic accomplishment, mm -hmm. he lists as once beat a pack rat in limited. Uh, you can't believe everything you read, Randy. <laughs> Here's General Tazri. So, if memory serves, we're going to go and get a Malachir Soothsayer here. Yeah, seems pretty good. 4-4 four, four for 5, 4 and a black. Yeah, this looks great. How do you... How I, do you I still don't understand Dizani's first pick. How do you not press her into service? Yeah, and how just is this go, better? Come on, General Tazri, you can do this for me. And take you first and uh, go uh, away we go. I mean, I like press into service. Right. Card's good. Card's fine. Is it like this ignore, seems better? Ignore General Tazri. Is press into service? Can you do you see that as a first pick card generally? I mean, no. Right. You can first pick well, it, of course. But 
No. It just seems a re- it just seemed a really surprising pick at the time, and nothing's changed since. I don't know. Is the rainbow ability distracting? You know, like ally creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of colors among those creatures. Like, yes, you're never activating that. Does that just become distracting? Like, it's a mythic rare. Jeremy's probably never played with it. He's read it in the spoiler. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just you get distracted by the fact that you're never going to turn on that ability, and you lose sight of the fact that any time an ally comes into play, he, or when when sorry when Tazri comes into play, even I got it wrong. When Tazri comes into play, search for an ally, put it in your hand, and shuffle. So just go get your best ally. Not repeatably. You're it's not going to activate no, the repeatably but it's just thing. Good plus better. His brood hunter worm for Severson. And again, Severson is very much uh, getting aggressive, as you do with a Grove Rumbler. It's not a, a jilting a wallflower. Cape Cotton Barnes will be looking for the turn when the Grove Rumbler isn't a 5 5, so that uh, Gideon's Reproach can uh, do something useful. But at that point, probably it isn't going to be attacking. I mean, Zani may have done GCB the favor of passing him what was actually a third pick, mm -hmm. Tazri. Didn't do him any favors after that by hoovering up all the white allies that came later. No. Sure. I mean, there's just somebody on the other side of the table that's going to win the uh, win the Grand Prix with a colorless deck. Yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, let's not forget that the two players who didn't have to play round 15 because they were already that good, thanks, were Alan Sun and Nick Slind. Uh, we haven't uh, heard a lot from them yet or about their uh, quarterfinals at this stage. They're still uh, grinding away in the feature match area. Um, so be interested to see what they've come up with. So land comes back. This is nice and syner synergistic with Grow Rumbler, Devouring sure. Flames. Take out the general. Yeah, even after that uh, comes into play ability was, had done its thing, Tatry was still the creature that Severson wanted to remove. So, Severson piling on the pressure. Andy Walker can cause Sky Climber. That is a cohort combo. Uh, for two life a turn. You Gideon's reproach, let's take out your four three, please. Please come see us right now. And then I'm going to take lots. Gabe Carlton Barnes, not necessarily on his last legs, but struggling. What does Severson follow up with? Nothing. Well, that is good news for GCB, but he's 17-4 behind. Malachis Soothsayer, um, unless it can properly stabilize with that Undo War Cleric, um, doesn't have a lot of draw steps in it at one life per pop. It's like a 4-4, four four though, right? Oh, yeah, that's the important bit, sure. Yeah. He needs more than that, though, that bow to deal with the Grove Rumble. Your attention, please. Go back to Sinister Map. Follow us. Always assuming Severson can keep uh, finding Thank land. a really lovely moment happening just off camera that uh, we, we, we don't have a chance to show you, but uh, there's a group from Calgary called Team Badgers mm -hmm. who've been here all weekend long, and they have just been so excited to see so many great players, and here they are still going at the end of the weekend. They've had a ton of fun. I don't think they've done a ton of winning, but they've done some, and they've met so many people that they've been thrilled to see. We've just seen them uh, taking a pose with Jeremy Dizani and, and Raph Levy, and you know, that's, that's a memory that you know, five years from now when they're much better players and they're going all over the world <laughs> and they're going, do you know, I remember going to Vancouver in 2016 and hanging out with all those great pros. And, uh, and you know, the pros are very, very gracious as well. 
um, always, you know, yep. the, they're always going to say, yes, I do have time to, ch to chat with you. And uh, true, it's good stuff. They're good ambassadors for the game. And uh, Broodhunter Worm comes back. <laughs> hey. Severson says, I need more Broodhunter Worms in my life. So 23 to 4 now. The island for Blue Splash. And the Rumbler continues to rumble. Gabe in this horrible spot of being tapped out against three colors of mana, seven mana available. He's going to uh, gain himself two life. Goes to one? Yeah. Here's the Brute Hunter Worm again. Last throws of the dice for Gabe Colton Barnes. Tremendous run. I think it's over. Don't activate that Malakir Soothsayer right now. Maybe you want to go out on your own terms. That's a perfectly acceptable way to, to activate that right now. But... Uh, I think Gabe knows he's been rumbled. Yeah. Alan's son and Adam Jansen are still going at it. Nick Slynn, Chris Hewitt. They're the two quarterfinals. In the bottom half of the bracket, Jeremy Dazani is about to know that Eric Severson will be his opponent. Almost certain. <laughs> Everson stood up from the table. Was that him running by on a toward a restroom? Yeah, he just ran right by our table. Okay. <laughs> he comes back. There are no permanents on Gabe Cotton Bard's <laughs> side of the board. There's a signed result slip. 2-1. And a little tumbleweed sound effect ripples across the battlefield. Conveniently enough, Randy, while we do not have live magic to discuss, we do have the most excellent Brian David Marshall, who uh, is joining us as we speak. And I imagine that Brian David Marshall has been watching some magic in the top eight area. BDM, what do you got for so us? So I've been watching uh, Chris Hewitt play against Nick Slynn. Mm -hmm. Chris Hewitt is playing uh, blue-black deck, lots of colorless activations, uh, you know, blinding drones, uh, Gravity Negators, etc. He was up against uh, a bug deck <laughs> from Nick Slynn that had things like Reality Smasher and Deceiver Reform and uh -huh. other gigantic monsters that uh, ultimately Nick Slynn won the match, even though I uh, learned a little something interesting. Containment uh, membrane on the Reality Smasher. And after the game, Nick's like, well, I, I, guess, I, I guess you should have countered that. And he's like, well, the judge is like, no, you actually, it's actually a missed trigger. It doesn't wow. just... So there was a mystery. So just remember your reality smasher triggers, kids. Wow. <laughs> so Nick Slynn advances. He yes. plays the winner of Alan's son and Adam Jansen. Uh, uh, Alan's son is up a game last yep. I looked. Okay. And uh, Adam Jansen, though, has a, a pretty sweet deck with Jory N. And, a uh, Ruined Diver. Yeah, yep. the Ruined Diver. Red, blue. Draws a lot of cards. It seemed like he was going to win game one, but... Uh, in the end, Red White Beatdown did it for uh, Alan Sun. Okay, great stuff. But uh, that's the match that we hope to bring you um, once this one is done with uh, GCB continuing to fight on. Hagra Sharpshooter is down. 
five creatures on board Ondu War Cleric, Core Sky Climber, the Malakir Soothsayer that currently cannot activate, Hagra Sharpshooter, and Hedron Crawler. Severson is going to send a Brood Hunter Worm. Hmm. Which would be a trade for that Core Sky Climber. Yup. And then Gabe will go back up to three. The grind, it begins. Sevis and out of gas. Is Cave going to grind his way back from the absolute edge? Maybe. Life Spring Druid. Sure. Draw a card? What do you think? The, the thing is, I mean, that Hagra Sharpshooter, which Jeremy Designey had a, an opportunity to take um, at one <laughs> point when we were thinking whether the Black Splash was going to be real it's or not. pretty good on this board. Um, right. Yep. Only the Grove Rumbler doesn't just die to that. He is going to draw a card. Went up to three, falls back down to two. Gets a card. Untapped. Severson's down to one card. <laughs> it ain't never over till it's over. Calastria Healer in hand for <laughs> Gabe Carlton Barnes. Eek my way to another life point. He needs the fourth ally anyway if he wants to cohort twice. Uh huh. Ding. <laughs> Five untapped mana. Put, put you to 22. Back we go to Severson. A lot of the action in this match is going to happen on Severson's turn for the next while. General Tazri is dead for Gabe Carlton Barnes, but she gave her life Giving a little call out to the Malakir Soothsayer. And right now, the 4 4 is really keeping Gabe Carlton Barnes in this. Because the 5 5 Grove Rumbler just isn't as big as it, as it was, it isn't as dominating as it was. Okay. <laughs> Severson with one card. Smacks of desperation. Yeah, I was going to say, he doesn't see things getting any better. Yeah. It certainly smells like, and things aren't getting better, attack. But, I mean... Gabe is going to play around what he can play around, but, I mean, he's not going to... Certainly, he's run out of life total to play with. He's going to be blocking everybody that he doesn't kill. It's another one of those spots where do you want to activate your sharpshooter pre-combat and get some information? Or do you want to commit to some blocks? You know, right, pre-blocking. Pre yeah. You know, sorry, yeah. Pre-blocks, pre mm -hmm. tap Hedron Crawler, activate sharpshooter... Maybe block first. So the Rumbler gets blocked by the Soothsayer. And the War Cleric.
because maybe the concern here is like brute strength, uh, brute strength, something like that. Sure. Cape has Zondu rising in hand for a possible future turn. The sharpshooter is going in front of the mimic. Everything is blocked. Yeah. Gabe says, I'll do it like this. Ordering of the blockers is thus. So Malachi Soothsayer uh, is first in line. So now there's a little fear that looked like a flicker of a lamb there, um, as Severson just checked. Because there's a, at this point, there's a, this little dance of Severson can say, I right. pass, and then Gabe goes, well, I can activate the sharpshooter, but if I do, then you get another chance to do something. Right. So maybe if you're, you're passing, then I let myself pass, even though I have something I could be doing. That said, I don't think he wants oh. his sharpshooter to die. Right, so uh, first things first. Gain two life. Gain two life off the Yondu War Cleric. Second thing, let's lose a life and draw another card. He still has the five mana available for the Hagra Sharpshooter. Did the card that he drew change whether he wants to spend five on a Hagra Sharpshooter ac activation? Let's see. Severson again looks at that one card in hand. He was 23 to 1 ahead <laughs> in this and looked all over the winner. Yeah. I don't like mimic. Keep the sharpshooter. That happens. Yeah, and by going for it, you know, Severson is able to trade the druid for Colostri Healer, which is better than just having your Druid die to Sharpshooter, obviously. And he was able to get the Soothsayer off the board by trading it for yeah. the Grove Rumbler. So now we have a Hagra Sharpshooter active, uh, a 2 2 one do War Cleric active because the Sharpshooter is also an ally. Hadrian Crawler may be generating colorless, but just hanging out as a potential blocker. Just a Scion on the other side, seven mana. Um, almost certainly a land in hand, you would assume for Severson. I mean, yeah. We know it is, but um, you have to assume that's all it can be. Uh, and now Gabe Carlton Barnes looking to see whether the advantage he gained out of General Tazri into Malachir Soothsayer uh, can give him an unassailable board. Here's Warden of Geometries, 2-3 Vigilance, and taps for C mana, colorless mana. And here's Core Sky Climber as well, which can uh, go over the top. And yeah. GCB. Do you want to attack or do you want to gain two more life? He's at four against a red deck. Yeah. The red deck's with the sharpshooter, but he's got right. the sky climber to cohort with w War Cleric. I'm fairly certain this is not something that will happen. But can you imagine at the end of Eric Sewison's turn, Gabe Carlton Barnes goes, I'd like to cohort to gain two life. And we get a response of a consuming sinkhole for four damage. <laughs> It's actually a good point. It may be that GCB I mean, is supposed to gain a life on his own turn. He's still got blockers. for. He's got Warden to block a Haze creature. I think you might actually be right. But just, it's a theoretical no, it's way a, that it's Gabe Look, it's a card lose. in the format. Right. I haven't really seen people playing it, but I mean, four mana, four to your face is a... No, Michael, Michael Bond had a very aggressive black-red deck earlier this afternoon that okay. didn't, didn't really pay off. We had that I on camera. That no, one. it was with, with Marshall, and uh, uh, it, it wasn't a great advert for it because it, it, it stumbled. It, it was very aggressive, but it didn't come out that way. Sure. Um, but uh, he had not one but two consuming sinkholes in his main deck um, in that uh, draft earlier today. Exert oh. influence. That's what the blue splash is for. Can is I for have exert your influence? Core sky climber? Does he have the white splash to get it flying? He does not. G 
DCB draws spell, not land. Three cards in hand. Hagra Sharpshooter is still active. But now the core Sky Climber does <laughs> could, could make Barity if only Severson had white. The consolation for Severson is that if he does draw a couple of spells in his next two or three turns, there is a bit of time for them to potentially make a difference. The board is not overwhelmingly powerful, the GCB right oh now. Oh, yeah, true. Severson going to chump with his Scion before it just dies to mm -hmm. leftover mana plus Sharpshooter. Three mana for Core Scythe Master. The turn that is potentially going to be wow. very bad news for Severson um, is when we see Ondu rising. Yeah, that's going to happen next turn. Um, because now there are enough creatures on board that Ondu rising awaken six creatures attack, looking at gaining three, five, nine, eleven, thirteen. Se G Gabe Cotton Barnes is, is in the market for gaining 17 life next turn, <laughs> um, which... Uh, a lot. Or, or hey, you know what? He might even. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's that's fine. Yeah, seventeen it would be. And he's currently responsible for everything on the board. Um, now we get the uh, relentless hunter three three. Uh, Severson leaves enough mana to turn it into a four four trampler. Just forgot to gain your life. Or did he remember? He just didn't touch the creature. It looks like the life total went up. Okay. He said that it. was the old look I at each other and go, here. two life. <laughs> yeah. Hard to hear him from here. Yeah, this is just Andu rising and turn them all sideways. It does look that way. Five, four counts. I'm going to do all that. Then I'm going to show you this on your rising. You knew it was there. Game's just thinking, is there, is there any reason not to just pile with everything? What could you possibly do to me here? Block. That one first strikes. Yeah, I mean, just the blocks are. Yeah, the blocks are mostly trades. The question was, do you want to attack with your two twos, when they can be blocked and picked off? And GCB decides no. He's content to gain two life from the cleric rather than lose a two two in order to get four life from those guys attacking. Yeah, so Severson certainly has choices here for what he wants to take out. Like, you take four from the Awaken, four from the Zillaport Chain Mage, put the Course Sky Climber uh, in front of the Warden of Geometries and get rid of two of his creatures, potentially, although you can do the same with the Chain Mage. Yeah, you'd rather trade um, for Chain Mage. And then uh, the Relentless Hunter... Uh, can take out either the warden or um, the three one, uh, because it yeah, then you just pump it up to four four. He's got what only colorless mana, GCB. I think you try to yeah. eat the scythe master. Well, it's going to make the slightly safer play of trying to eat warden. Takes an extra point of damage, but fewer trick feet in my guess. It also depends whether he has anything. Uh, in hand because if he goes uh, if he goes up against the scythe master he has to spend three mana to activate the relentless hunter to get it to the four four whereas as it is he's True. straight beat he's straight eating uh, the warden yeah good point all right so seven gets through. And it's a trade and warden. Five creatures to one. <laughs> four, four, 
Three one first strike when it attacks. Two two that gives minus one minus one. Two two that gains two life a turn. An angel crawler. Up against a three three relentless hunter, which is probably more relent than relentless at the moment. That is no fifteen fifteen that has appeared. <laughs> Early vestige. Mm -hmm. Three four. 2111. Remember when it was 1 to 26? I, 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 I do. That was like 10 minutes ago. 23, of course, now with uh, that little end of turn uh, action. Alan's son, last we heard, 1 0 up on Adam Jansen. Good jet deck for Jansen, but needs to be because he's 1 0 down. Just in front of us, Ralph Levy and Jeremy Dizani chat. Dizani comfortably relaxed, having uh, achieved everything he wanted out of the weekend already in terms of uh, Pro Tour invites, locked up for the rest of the season now. We'll see him in Atlanta. We'll see him in Madrid. We'll see him in Sydney. Yeah, swing and a miss with Transgress the Mind there, but not really a miss in that Gabe got the knowledge he wanted. Mm -hmm. What is the card you're holding? Is it something I have to worry about? Is it something I have to play around? No. But again, by going in with the 3-1... No, it's different this time because there's sharpshooter mana. Right. So sharpshooter mana means that the 3-1 uh, first striker can, in fact, beat up... Yeah, even a 4-4 four, four four four. hunter. So instead, it's like, all right, which of these two would you like to kill for your 4-4? <laughs> four four? Is going to pump, which doesn't do anything except deny a point, save a point of damage hitting to vestige. Not relevant. Side master's just going to keep turning sideways. Eric has a, drawn a hedron crawler, I believe. Which well, that's what he that's what he had last turn. Oh, okay. It it looked like oh, okay. GCP's played this game great. In for three. And again, <laughs> first strike, such a great ability. Here's a netcaster spider. All right. Two life end of turn. Two more. Is that all right? 27. Thanks. And the number four si seed, Gabe Colton Barnes, has completed a, or has thus far made a remarkable comeback. used what our life total master Neil Rigby refers to as all of his 19 bonus life. <laughs> life is a resource at its finest. He's now all the way back up to the lofty heights of 27. And double block actually kills the Scythe Master, right? Five power there. Yeah. Give that minus one. He's content with the trade. Mm -hmm. Now, though, he's whittled Severson down to a 2 3. As a by the by. Which he can attack with, attack through yeah. with 2 2s. Let's also remember that there are now seven lands in play for Gabe Carlton Barnes plus a Hedron Crawler. He's either drawing spells or lands. If they're lands and he gets to 10, no one said Hagra's Sharpshooter had to tap for its ability. <laughs> you just have to have five mana. Two fives to 10, and then things become next to impossible for Severson. Because it's not just the insta-kill. Yeah. I mean, okay, look, here's a, br here's a brood monitor plus an assortment <laughs> of chums. 
And it can take a little while to chew, chew through all of those. Yeah. I mean, that's a really good good draw a lot of the time. But it doesn't feel like it changes an awful lot as we see mana number nine for GCB and pass. Didn't expect to be saying that Hagra Sharpshooter was going to do the business, and now maybe it isn't. Because Severson hmm. has finally found a spell that doesn't uh, care particularly about the Hagra Sharpshooter. In fact, it cares especially about the Hagra Sharpshooter so much, it wants it under a rock. So this game was 1 to 20 what? 1 to 23. Now it's 25 to 5. The other way. And we're still going. Yeah. What a crazy game. Severson is legitimately on offense now. Oh my lord. GCB doesn't even have an ally to go with our war cleric anymore. Oh, it's been so good. Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Nakana Assassin. Wow. We're back in business with the life gain. Which can also trigger death touch in a pinch. You can block many of the things. I guess Brood Monitor can still attack. Nakana Assassin. Yeah, it's a Death trade. Touch. It's a trade. Which maybe that is what GCB wants to do. I mean, Brood Monitor should attack here. It's either getting through for damage or taking an assassin down with it. Now here's a stalking drone. And now here's Hedron <laughs> Crawler, which can it's time. activate the stalking drone. Sharpshooter's gone. I now need yes. a repeatable source of colorless. We've seen Malachis Soothsayer draw, I think it was around about three cards from memory. Two or three, yeah. Uh, for GCB. There is a potential point, may already have happened, where Eric Severson is in the market of how many cards do you have left in your library? You can have as much life as you want. Nah, I don't think that's how this game plays out. All right. I was just thinking about that Soothsayer, though. How good was the attack from Eric Severson? Like, as soon as he realized he was doomed to the sharpshooter, he jammed all his creatures into the red zone. Gabe was still at a low enough life total that he was obliged to block and trade. Traded that soothsayer off. And, you know, GCB was ahead of a couple of cards at that point, a couple of permanents. But the game was still close enough that Severson could just draw his way out of it. Which, which he's done. I mean, that attack, we, we, we said it smacked of desperation. And he had no trick. And he lost basically his whole board, but he took enough down with him that it opened this up. Now, GCP's drawn pretty dry, right? He's he's kind of he's definitely flooded. He's just he's drawn a couple more lands than Severson, and you know, his sharpshooter mm. eventually died, but Severson has played this game quite well. That's not terrible uh, for GCB because uh, Eric Severson, I mean it's to Drew Pathwood, which does have trample as well. Um, but nonetheless, there is a chance to to trade reasonably here. Uh, for GCB because he can give Death Touch um, to his slaughter drone. And now Severson back on offense. 23 1 ahead. <laughs> then it was 25 5 the other way. It got to 29. 29 in the end. Now it's back to 19 5. And Severson's back favorite again. This is a tremendous game of magic. Let's hope it's not decided by Gabe just uh, falling away to land, 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 land. Like another twist to this tale. <laughs> okay, 
passes. It was Grove Rumbler that dominated phase one of this game. Then a succession of allies for Gabe Carlton Barnes, of which the Ondu Sky Cleric is the last one standing. All right, GCB's tired of just taking it. Block the Stalking Drone, give it Death Touch. Yep. Well, wait, yeah. When Severson passes, GCB right. doesn't even need the Death Touch. And then Severson passes. Four mana. Four. Retreat to a merry. Hello. So a chance for some one ones. A chance for some boost at some point. Land, trigger landfall. Here, have an ally. And who knows, maybe thus begins phase four of this yeah. game. Now this board is back to more or less stable. I mean, even if Brood Monitor attacks and Gabe doesn't want to trade for it, he's gaining two life and taking three is a lot of turns left at that rate. I'm and Steverson doesn't have the life gain. He's still sitting at five. I'm, I'm going to just... Uh, Press the rewind button for a moment uh -huh. and, and hear myself say, eh. There may be a point in this game where <laughs> Eric Steven starts to settle in and wonder how many cards are left in Gabe Carlton Barnes' right. library. Now we're say, closing in on it. However many life you have, I don't care. And I now we're closing in on it. This is one of those moments where we are not going to ask the players how many cards are left <laughs> in Gabe Collins Barnes Library in case Eric Severson has not contemplated this. We are contemplating this. Landfall trigger, though. What is it? Six creatures on Eric's side? To Gabe five is now on at five? Series. Yes. The more off-camera Gabe Cotton Barnes gets on the board, the more likely he is to be <laughs> able to win this. 11 lands in play, so how many more landfall triggers does he actually get? Six, probably? Prude Monitor comes in. Ruins of Oren Reef from Eric Severson. Game team, back up to 12. Land, make an ally. Maybe? Yes, yes. You have to feel, bearing in mind that it is 20 past 9 at night here, <laughs> and at half past 8 this morning, the players were walking in to get ready for their first draft at 9, the winner of this game right here is Jeremy Dazani. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has had like an hour and more to just relax, get a last bite to eat for the evening. Relax and or scout. I, he's not bothering to scout. He's just sitting and chatting and uh, waiting for someone to win this. Alan's son against Adam Jansen. Still going. Really? Nick's, apparently. Nick Slind is through okay. to Chris Hewitt. And he'll play the winner of Alan's son, Adam Jansen. Landfall trigger. More allies. Six creatures plays seven. Still not enough. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, yeah. forty, fifteen, sixteen cards in the graveyard. Twenty, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-nine by the time you add up the land. 30, 31, 32, 33 by the time you add up the creatures and the retreat to Ameria. The card in hand is 34. So Gabe's got six cards left in his uh, library. Is, is, my, is my current best guess Sounds for Sounds about right. And you see him, he keeps picking up his graveyard and looking through it because he's trying to remember precisely what's in his deck. Yes. Like, what are the outs that he's playing for? Does he have a way to break through? Is he just trying to go wide and then get in one big well, attack? That doesn't. The thing is, how many lands he, he playing? For that, how many land is he? Because if he's like seventeen it's or eighteen, probably seventeen. Okay, uh, they uh, took the deck list away to type it up. I can't look it up All exactly. Right. But at seventeen, 
he has four more triggers. That's 14 land he's got in play. So he has three more. He hasn't played a spell since that retreat. Shouldn't he have spells left? A so here's a reckless bushwhacker. bushwhacker, which is the least hasty, least <laughs> aggressive bushwhacker that's been for a yeah, while. Yeah, now Eric has officially settled in for the deck, I believe. Uh, right. He's going to look at the graveyard. What do you have left? What have I four. seen? Four. Four cards. Four cards left in the final game of this quarterfinal. It has taken four phases of, of swingy play, which is now teetering back the other way towards Severson. But Severson, if he has an ounce of imagination in his body, <laughs> his heart must be pounding as this army, shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. shoulder. But, but hey, <laughs> shoulder support, it says draw a card. Yeah, it does. It says lose a turn. Yeah, but those counters are useful. And, and you'd rather have the card sooner rather than later. Hope you're having as much fun at home watching this as we are. This is just amazing stuff. Here's the card that he drew. I'll shoulder to shoulder. It's Oblivion Strike for it the is Tajiru indeed. Path Warden. Now there are six blockers left for Eric Severson and eight attackers currently. That's not enough with three well, cards left. Okay, how many can he he can attack multiple times though, right? It's not like the crackback is lethal. No, sure. Now the Path Warden's dead. Sure. What is Severson's crackback for? Even if nothing died, it's still only for nine? GCB's at eighteen. Uh-huh. Now he's gonna lose stuff if he attacks. That's the real problem. There's two three and a three three. And they, a they lot of ordinary. The 2-3 yeah. and the 3-3 three, three get to pick things off. Nothing else can block and survive. It's one. It's four of those six creatures mm -hmm. are one toughness. So, I mean, I think Gabe might be able to go for multiple attacks here. Has he played a land this turn? I think... No, there's the land for the turn. And he's going for the plus one power trigger. Right. He's not interested in making an ally. It's like, now I've got enough. We watched Gabe do this yesterday, right? He played a feature match against Matt Costa that he won with, like, two cards left in his library. You remember that? This. Oh, it was no, insane. No, Go I wasn't back. in that match. Go back and watch that one. It was great. Yes. And yeah, Costa settled in for the deck, and Gabe calmly knew exactly what outs he was playing for, maneuvered the whole game to win. You talk about how the first 19 points of life were bonus. Well, whatever. You went with three first, cards left in your first library. First 37 Same. cards were bonus as well. Doesn't matter. All unless of the resources. Getting his money's worth out of his deck. All right. So Spider wants to pick off an ally. Brood Monitor wants to pick off an ally. They will both survive those fights. Bushwhacker, Trade, Hedron Crawler, Chumps, a two-power... Those Scions are chumping, chumping. Severson is looking to take four, if I'm not mistaken. Very briefly, Brian David Marshall, what do you got? This is the last match in the feature match area. Adam Jansen, Jorian Ruin Diver wins 2-1. Wow. Uh, in, the other, in the other remaining match. Fantastic. Thanks very much to Brian David Marshall bringing us the news that Adam Jansen will face Nick Slind and Jeremy Dizani, we know, will face who? I like GCB's chances. This is not a man that gets decked. This is a man that plays to his outs and figures out, knows exactly what's left in his library, what to play for. He got through for four damage this turn. I'm pretty sure Severson's at one. He has five creatures. It's now to five two. plays two. Every one of those creatures is lethal. Three cards left in GCBs. Oh, Ruin Processor! Is there? There's nothing exiled, is there? It's just a giant beast. It nothing nice. to process. That five life would have been he's, insane. He's going to put the counter on. Sure. And have three mana up. Two spare creatures, though. Gabe Colton Barnes draws his third last card. Yeah, land is fine. <laughs> Spell is fine. He's going to use two to spatial contortion. Wow. Away. Now it's two blockers. 
five attackers, one life. Yeah, turn him sideways. For one of the great comebacks of the ages. <laughs> Gabe Cotton Barnes does it, and that is one of the great I'm, games of Magic. I'm going to have to correct you. I think that was two of the great comebacks of Grand Prix Top 8 history. <laughs> Both of them by Gabe Carlton Barnes. <laughs> what a truly, truly spectacular game of Magic by the pair of them. Eric Severson falls so narrowly, but Gabe Carlton Barnes advances to the semifinals of Grand Prix Vancouver 2016.